On this video, you will learn how to send API requests with the Playwright, how to receive responses and verify them, how to utilize some of the best practices of API automation testing, and mainly how to create and utilize API helper methods in your scalable test automation framework. But before we get started, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you would not miss out on such as useful tutorials like this one and that one on latest job market trends so you would know what's going on in the world of tech jobs and mainly on successful stories of people who never were in tech just like this young girl who was 40 plus or quite 40 plus when she got her first tech job offer now let me quickly introduce myself and then we're going to kick it off my name is Sergey Kromchenko. I'm a software QA engineer, lead manager, and the senior engineer manager of SDAT in the past. But these days, I'm helping people like you to become a QA engineer from scratch or to improve your existing skills. Now, let's kick it off. First of all, let's quickly install Playwright. Let's go to Google and type in Playwright install. It's okay if you mis misspell it. Click on the first link, scroll down, copy the very first command, and let's open up a VS Code. I did create a folder called API, and that's why I am going to be. Uh, that's where I'm going to be installing the Playwright. So we're going to paste this command, hit enter. It's going to ask you what language to pick. I'm going to use my keyboard to select JavaScript. You cannot use your mouse pad, by the way, in a terminal, only the keyboard. So I'm going to hit enter to select location for the test folder. I'm going to hit enter here as well, here as well, as we, we're okay to install those browsers. We don't really care. And cool, the Playwright has been installed. If you guys haven't ever played with the Playwright, simply check out this video right here. I have installed it for the first time and explain how to work with it. Now, let's get into APIs. How to say Playwright send API request. API testing, boom. I want you guys to, if you have never visited this page before, screen through, read every single word here to understand the context of it. I'm going to go directly into the money and only show you how to work with the APIs, how to send API requests and how to verify the responses. So, but you can take care of the rest, so I wouldn't waste your time. Cool. Let's navigate to test, test folder. One more time, guys. If you have never played with the Playwright, simply check out a video of mine. Okay, I'm going to remove the rest of the code, paste the one that I've just copied, and we're going to remove title to say can send API. That's fine. It's just a dummy one. Number one thing that you will not notice here is request is not has not been declared yet. You cannot find it, right? So let's see. Will it actually give us an option to quickly fix it? Update playwright import from HTTP. All right, well, whatever it does, we can simply pass it through the Playwright itself because request is an API client of the Playwright, so we can send APIs. We can pass it just like we're passing the page of its own. Cool. Now we need to get the URL. Where are we sending the API requests? And I did find a good looking page for you. So it's a, it's a dummy json.com website, pretty much it's a dummy API server. You are more than welcome to use it completely for free. So we're going to do the same. We're going to copy this URL. We're going to paste it right here. And that's going to be our paste, paste uh, add or post request. Let's change the name to new comment as, as it's not an, an issue. We're going to be adding a new comment to this dummy website. And let's see, we have to have this, these headers. So let's click here, paste it, beautify the code with the option shift F. Okay, data. I think we should use different data. So they want us to send this JSON in a stringified format. So let's copy it in exactly the same way and overwrite this data right here. So the data or bodies is the same thing. Different frameworks will call it differently. I have just pressed Option Shift F to beautify the code. If you've never done it before and you're going to press Option Shift F on the Mac, you will see drop down here. Just click configure and select Jazz Beautifier or something like that. Alrighty, 
let's move forward let's comment out the second request we don't need it at the moment so we've got our post request right here uh, and we're post method and we're passing mul multiple arguments argument number one is a url argument number two is the body it's well not a body it's an object that contains headers and a data which is the body and then we have expect to verify that it's truthful what i'm also going to do i'm going to output the result and i will say please pay attention await new comment dot json because we have to convert the answer or response to json format so it would be human readable okay now it's time to run it npx play right test example and example means this spec file boom so whatever is before the dot spec will be found excellent but we're getting three answers right three responses we don't need that so we do it because we have remember it did ask us if we want to install multiple browsers and we did by default it's running all three of them we don't really care about that so we're going to get only one and the thing is we are creating dummy comment seems like because the id is the same if i will run it one more time if it sends us the same id exactly that means it's just a fake data but we're okay with that as long as we're getting a response so we can we can verify that we did send api request we are getting api response and now what we're going to do we're going to also send the get request and i will show you how to verify the complete body of this api and then we're going to create an api helper method and move it to a separate js file and import it from there as this is what you will do as the professional qa engineer whenever you work for a company because you want to take it to the next level you, you want to make it a little more scalable okay now we got it let's remove that verification that needed we're going to be using this verification right here so now we can you know what let's first save const new comment json let's save the response and then verify it boom by the way in a mac you can highlight it you can do command slash to comment it out comment slash to decomment it out cool let's verify this so this is not the body we want to verify that's the default verification that comes from playwright we're going to replace it and since the body is always the same we can simply copy paste it it's not going to be dynamic so it's even easier to verify it and, but we're going to replace this part right here because that's the verification part okay not that beautiful i want to put it on the separate lines boom 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 excellent so we did add it but we don't have to have that to contain equals should be enough but we just need to change it to to match object i believe that's the one yep to match object so we would exactly match this object okay now we're going to run it verify that it looks that it works and then i'm going to show you something that you probably did not know about before while i'm more than glad to share lots of materials on youtube i understand that not everyone can learn test automation easily on your own and i've helped thousands of people all over the world who wanted to become key automation engineers or as that's and if you're not sure if QA automation is your thing, you can simply join our QA introduction week where you will learn test automation for seven days, basics of test automation with me and our mentors, so you could understand if it's a your thing, if you would like to pursue this career. The link for it is right below this video. But if you do already fully understand that you want to pursue this career and you want to join our test automation course with the professional mentors for three months and a half with the intensive interview preparation, and a job training from the day one you can simply follow the link right below this video to schedule one-on-one -on -one call with me where i'll be more than glad to answer all of your questions let's continue okay it does work but aside of it works we need to make sure that it doesn't work that's the most important piece otherwise your test could be false positive right which means that whenever you're running your test it always passes so our test did fail when we have made a change excellent so we are done with the step number two step number three 
Let's send the get request, so I could show you how to send it, verify it, and then we can move forward to moving them into helper methods. All right, let's do this. Let's update the request. So get would be all the way at the beginning, right here. That's the get request. And by the way, guys, I might be too fast, so feel free to pause this video and review it. I'll scroll back so you could see the data I'm copy pasting because it literally could be fast. I remember when I was just starting out, I, I would pause every five seconds when the guys would be fast on the YouTube. Okay, setting get request. And let's see, ideally, when you work for a company, you, you're, you can get the data that you've just created, right? So you're getting this data and this data comes back in, the for, in this format. So you can say new comment JSON dot ID and you would get 252 if that's what you're getting from the response, right? I don't think we will get it because it's hard coded and we're always getting the same one, which means it's not getting created on, it's not getting created on the back end, but we will test it out. So let's do this. Log, not an issue, but comment, and it's going to be get comment. By the way, if you don't know how am I changing both lines together, I double click and then I do command D on Mac. And now what you do, you can see it's highlighted in two space, in both spaces, in both spots. So you can change both spots. And then when, as soon as you click, it will, it will switch focus to one spot only. Okay, get comment and let's see, what will it give us? I betcha you will say it's not found. Oh, we have to convert it. Await dot to JSON. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Hold. Oh, that's, we did get some, we did get some comment because it's a, it has an ID one. What if we say ID? new comment json dot id then it will give us not found because as i said it doesn't really have the server it's a fake one oops i think there is a mistake to be truthy yeah the expect fail let's remove expect it should probably give us an error say it's not found post with id 252 not found exactly we always create it but it's never found because the server is fake it's just saying that we did create it cool that's expected response let's say that way and then let's just verify that message as well so expect to contain equal and then let's just remove that with this and let's use same to match object so that's what we are expecting to get Okay, so we're removing console log and we're saying that we're going to send a get comment request with an ID that we've just received from our response. And we can even add, hold on a sec. Yes, this is verification. Let's, let's put a comment so you guys will not get confused. Number one, create new comment, verify comment was created verify response let's say that way verify response and here get a newly created comment nice so three steps right excellent and even though this one is saying that it doesn't exist we expect that as well let's run it verify it cool we're almost done now let's create a separate helper method and let's create a folder because we do have a test folder and I think we should have new folder not inside of the tests but outside and we're going to call it API and inside of the API folder we're going to create a file called comments dot comments API dot jazz or let's see they're using dot notation so let's say comments dot API dot jazz Excellent. Now we're going to export function create comment and we're going to move our entire comment creation logic to it. Mm -hmm. Let's move it here. Beautify it. By the way, Option Shift F is how you beautify it. Okay. 
and we're it saying that await is present only allowed in async functions. Exactly, our function should be async if we want to await for it. Excellent. And also, we need to, whenever we're creating common, we need to pass the request, right? So request in a test is coming from the playwright itself, from the test itself. So we need to pass it into helper method if we're planning to use it. By the way, let's say um, await create um, comment. Nice, out of fill. There we go. It's automatically it has automatically been imported. And then now we need to pass request so we could use it inside of the helper method and send the API request and get a response. And we're going, I'm going to call it differently just so you guys would understand that arguments and parameters can, be, can have a different names. All right, and that's what I do with our students as well because a lot of times people are getting confused because they're getting used to getting used to putting same name for the parameters and arguments. Inside of the function is parameter, whatever what you are passing is an argument. All right, so we're passing this and we're gonna say const new comment. And then we're going to pass it here. We're going to convert response in actual in actual helper method to simplify it. So this is how it's going to look like after we've created a helper method. But now let's make sure it works. So, and it's okay. We're going to hard code the URL for now. You can move it to playwright config. But if you guys want me to show you more advanced way of doing things, simply leave a comment below this video and say create advanced test automation framework for API, and I will do that for you. Uh, but for now, let's continue. So we're passing our API client. We're sending post request this data title user ID, and we can pass the whole object. Now we can pass. I mean, we ideally we should pass the whole object here mm -hmm. come and we're going to pass the comment so let's create it here const comment so we should pass that data comment object mm -hmm. and let's also receive it comment object so we're gonna have it right here I've just beautified the code, FYI. We can probably put it on one line just to save the space and keep it nice and short as it's very quick. Okay, so we are creating a comment and we can use Faker, just FYI, in the future to, to randomize this data, to create this data randomly. We're passing this comment and a request to create comment helper method. And then in here, we are creating a new comment and we're verifying response. And then let's also const, oh, we have already converted it. So we'll just return it. Return new comment JSON. Awesome. So we have just moved our API request to helper method. And now we're going to verify that it all works. Let's do that. I'm going to run it. Uh oh, something has failed. Expect is not defined. Oh, that's right. Expect is not defined. And that's in a comment API JS line 10. By the way, that's how you debug it. You read, you see the error message and right above it, you should actually the error message right here and right below it, you will see the line where it's broken. Expect is not defined line 10. So if we want to keep it here, we do need to import expect. I think we have an example here. Yeah, perfect. We can just paste it here, remove the test because we don't really need it. And now when we run it, we're going to be able to see success. You know the drill. If you have enjoyed this video, make sure to hit this big fat thumb up button below. Subscribe to our channel. And also, if you have any questions to me, I personally read all of the messages or comments below the videos. So feel free to shoot one right there. Get some water, get some workout, and I'll see you on the next video.